Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our annual graduation ceremony. I want to begin by acknowledging that the ground on which we celebrate today is the unceded territory of the Wulistikwe, Mi'kmaq, and Peskamataquati First Nations. Please stand to welcome the class of 2023. I'd like everyone to remain standing for O Canada. We're all just going to sing this together. You can be seated. Welcome everyone. It's so nice to see everybody out today and I'm very, very happy that it is not hot. It's not as hot as it could be. I heard on the radio that there is a heat warning in the north of the province. So I'm very happy to be in the south. I'd like to say a very special welcome to all of our family members. It's nice to see all the family members sitting here in the front rows. We have today with us Superintendent Derek O'Brien and Director of Schools, Rosemary Southard, and a special welcome to the class of 1973. We have a few of them sitting over here and I was really happy to see you guys. Um, the class of 1973 were Mary Calder, Susan Chute, Brian Fletcher, Deborah Matthews, Joan Matthews, James Matthews, Blake Mitchell, Janet Smart, and James Newman. So it's very nice to see you. I'm very glad that you guys could come. The flowers on the stage, well, in front of the two podiums, are placed in memory of Peter Maybe, Stephanie Mulberry, Debbie Anthony, Turk Brunet, and Donald Wayne Jackson. At this time, I would like to invite Belle Mitchell to give the salutatory address. I'd like to welcome and thank everyone who is here to celebrate with us today. This is a big day for me and my classmates, and we would like to thank our teachers, staff, family, and friends for their unwavering support and guidance. 
and I'm not really big on speeches, so um, that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Bell. Um, Mr. O'Brien is going to bring greetings from the district. Belle, one thing that I've learned in life is nobody will ever complain when, you're sh when you give a short address like that, but you'll <laughs> definitely hear them complain when you're long-winded, so I think you chose the best way about it. Uh, good afternoon to our honoured guests today, to Principal Carton and to your Vice Principal, and to all of the staff who are here and the families, and especially to you graduates here of Campobello Island Consolidated School. On behalf, on behalf of all of us and the staff and of Anglophone School District South and our District Education Council, congratulations to all of you. High school graduation is a very exciting time and it marks both an end and a beginning. I hope that you have a collection of past memories and big dreams for the future. I hope that you celebrate this time talking about all of the great field trips you've had, the classroom pranks, that you've played, all of the athletics and activities you've been involved in, the science and the heritage fairs, all of the projects and the essays and the exams, 13 years or more of experiences that I know have made you laugh and probably cry at times. We hope that your journey with us has been rich and rewarding. Each one of our schools strive to be more than just a place of learning and your teachers have worked very hard to nurture your minds, to encourage your passions, and shape you into the compassionate individuals that I see before me today. You have celebrated each other's diversities, learned from others' experiences, and I hope have enriched your own. We are confident that you have skills and competencies that will help you contribute positively to our communities as you continue learning at work, at college or at university. Whatever you choose, find your passion and please be ambassadors of kindness for those around you. You're surrounded here today by quite a number of people who are extremely proud to see you in your caps and gowns. These people love you for the person you are and they have been a tremendous support to you. Your families, your teachers and school staff all of your friends and members of this community have helped you in your journey. Offer them your gratitude and know that they want to continue to support you however you need it along your path. This doesn't mean they want you sleeping on their couch. And I will tell you that probably by Christmas your bedrooms will be new places in their homes. They're either going to become someone's walk-in closet, someone's sewing room, or someone's other hobby room. But those spaces as your own are coming to an end. The Campobello Island Consolidated School graduates of 2023, we are extremely proud of you. Congratulations and best of luck. When Mr. O'Brien mentioned about the pranks, it made me uh, think about the prank that the grads pulled last week on the teachers. Um, and they wrote no parking on all of the teachers' um, parking spots. And then today I had people come in and say, are these spots reserved for somebody? Is that why there's no parking? <laughs> so it continues on. Um, at this time, I would like to invite uh, Sonia Chu to get, introduce our guest speaker. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my pleasure to introduce a remarkable educator who has dedicated 24 years of her career to shaping the minds and hearts of our students. Ms. Gina Denbo, a passionate and committed teacher, has been a guiding light for our graduating class throughout their middle school years. Ms. Denbo's impact on our students goes far beyond the classroom. As a resource teacher, she has not only provided a valuable academic support, 
but has also served as a source of inspiration and guidance for our students as they navigate their years. During their time under Ms. Denbo's guidance, our graduating class embarked on a meaningful project called Food for Future Heroes, where they raised money to support children in Sierra Leone. Through this project, our students not only learned essential leadership and teamwork skills, but also the import importance of giving back. Please join me in expressing our deepest gratitude and admiration for Ms. Gen Gina Denbo, a truly exceptional teacher who has touched the hearts and minds of countless students, including our graduating class of 2023. Good afternoon. Thank you, Madam Chu, for all those kind words. Mr. O'Brien, Ms. Southard, Mrs. Carton, Madam Chu, fellow staff members, family, friends, parents, and graduates, I'm honored to be speaking here today. Today is a celebration of hard work. Parents, you all should be extremely proud of yourselves because your hard work and dedication has played a significant role in having these grads up here on this stage today. And grads, you each need to pat yourselves on the back for committing to countless assignments, studying for numerous tests, showing up on days when you just weren't feeling it, and you made commitments to yourselves to meet goals. All of you should be extremely proud. Six years ago, Rihanna, Bean, and Ramsey entered my classroom as young girls eager to learn. We read books like Underground to Canada, Number of the Stars, and My Side of the Mountain. I loved taking them to places and books that they'd never been before and opening up those discussions about times and places in the world that were new. We became close, as close as teacher and students could be. They were in my classroom daily, sometimes three times a day for three years. And we worked together on the many fundraisers for Food for Future Heroes, the project where they dedicated their time and support to children in another country whom they'd never met. Watching them become global citizens and learn to be empathetic towards others has definitely been a highlight in my career. Looking back, I have so many memories that I could share about these three girls, but I'll only tell a few so that I don't embarrass you guys too much. Whenever I left the classroom for a few minutes, Rihanna would swipe my cell phone and she'd take a selfie or two. For a while, I had no idea that this was happening, but when I discovered those photos, I had a great laugh. Little did she know, I was getting a sneak peek into her world, and I was seeing the year unfold through her eyes. Another great memory that I have of Rihanna is a bus trip we once took to Kingsbury Gardens. She got sick on the bus, and once we got to customs, there was absolutely no way, under no circumstances, was she riding the bus any longer. So I agreed that I would get off, and I waited at St. Stephen Customs for over an hour for somebody to come pick us up. We wandered around the grounds looking at different things, and she pointed out different trees and plants that her father had taught her about. And then we rolled up our pant legs, we took our shoes off, and we wandered through a swamp looking for frogs. <laughs> Bean always had a wisecrack answer to any question. She liked to make people laugh, and when she started laughing, it was, not, it was really hard not to laugh with her. I never knew from day to day or week to week what she might say. I remember during middle school, there was a period of time that Bean carried a friend around with her. Ishmael, I think his name was. It was Ishmael. Ishmael was a ceramic horse, and it attended every class with us for several months. This past year, Bean took a couple of courses, online courses, and she often came to my room to work on them. I remember one particular day that I walked into the room and I found her all curled up on my couch, covered up in a blanket. Check the time, and it wasn't online class time. So I asked, are you feeling okay? She opened one eye. She looked at me, said, Ms. Dembo, just not feeling people or the classroom today. Close that eye. End of discussion. <laughs> In grade six, Ramsey came to school with her work dog, Gus. He was a very special person, and he had a special space in our class, and he became one of our class. Wherever Ramsey went, Gus was close by. Ramsey was awarded the Turnaround Achievement Award for her hard work in grade eight, and she volunteered for almost every sporting event through high school that she wasn't playing in. 
I remember in middle school seeing her walk around in a pair of homemade flip-flops that were made out of recycled water bottles that was a French project, and when her CO2 car snapped in half when it hit the stopper. When these three left middle school and headed to high school, they always stopped by my office to chat, hung out in my room, and often spoke when I saw them in the hall. They transitioned from middle school to high school well, and they thought that they were going to be a graduating class of three. And then last year, in grade 11, the three became a class of four. I never had the privilege of teaching Keaton, so I don't have the personal connections with him as I do with the girls. However, I talked to some of your teachers, and I got some things that I'd like to share. Keaton completed two years of CICS in the Essential Skills Achievement Pathway. During that time, he completed numerous projects that seemed impossible, and he was awarded the Inspire Award for his achievements. One thing that really stood out was the mentor that Keaton became to the younger students in the class. Since he was the only grade 12 student, they looked up to him for guidance and support. Keaton actually finished his grade 12 year a bit early as he completed a capstone project where he built a welding station for our school. This is something that will come in handy for the other kids to use for learning, as well as a way that CICS will remember Keaton. This next part of my speech is directed to the graduates, so I'm gonna turn a little bit so that I can look at them and they can see me. I saw, a, I saw a quote titled, Five W's of Life, by an unknown source, and I immediately thought that I needed to share it with you guys. I often discuss the five W's of writing when you were in middle school. Who, what, where, when, why, as they are the basis for gathering information and problem solving. So whether you're writing an essay or preparing for the next chapter of your life, the five W's hold true. Who. Who you are is what makes you special. Don't change for anyone. Be you. Don't be who others think you should be. Be true to yourself. Do what makes you feel good, what your gut tells you to do. Don't be afraid to stand up for yourself. Step outside that box. Life's too short to worry about what others think or what others say about you. Enjoy life. Have fun. And give people something to talk about. As long as you're being true to yourself, you're going to be fine. What? What lies ahead will always be a mystery. Don't be afraid to explore it. Take that road less traveled. When you encounter detours, you never know what you might find. And the best adventures don't always come from the best laid out plans. They sometimes come from the unexpected. When? When life pushes you over, push back harder. Don't let life step all over you. Remember, there's going to be times and they're going to be hard. That's not a secret. There's going to be times when you fail, there'll be times that are rough, and times that you just don't want to go on. But those are the times that you need to push through. Getting to the other side of those times, it's unbelievable. Where? Where there are choices to make, make the ones you won't regret. Don't spend your life wishing you, wishing you had done things or wondering what if. Make those choices where you can say, can't believe I just did that, and the ones where you learned. You won't always make the right choice. You will stumble and fall, but learn from those mistakes. Move forward so that you have no regrets. Why? Why things happen? Never certain. Take it in stride and move forward. Use your voice to speak up. Listen to your heart and live the life that you imagine. No one knows what the future holds. Don't wait around for the perfect opportunity so that you miss the right opportunity. Remember, you're going to learn from those mistakes. It's up to you to take that first step. Figure out what works best and what doesn't, and then adjust accordingly. At the end of the day, as long as you keep striving to be the best that you can be, learn every step of the way, you'll never veer into the wrong track. Who, what, when, where, and why. These words will cross your mind more than you ever think. You'll question your motives, you'll question your ideas, you'll question life. But remember, you have the answers inside of you to most of these questions, and when you don't have the answers, you know how to find them. Trust yourself, and do you. A few weeks ago, we attended an event called We Believe in St. John. And during one of those presentations, there was a quote on the big screen that said, purpose is the reason you journey. Passion is the fire that lights the way. Be passionate about what you want and what you do. You will fail at times, you'll stumble, you'll fall. You will think that there's nothing going right, but don't focus on those times and stay in those, that moment. Remember your purpose and continue your journey. You have an entire world at your fingertips. 
and the opportunity to go to great places and do great things. There's something for everyone, and you'll each find your thing. I'm so proud of each one of you. You've all overcome obstacles to get where you are today. Today is the day that you never thought would come. 13 years ago, when you entered kindergarten, this day was a lifetime away, but now you're here. This is the end of an enormous chapter of your life, but it's also just the beginning. You have so much to offer this world, and I know you'll do great things. Congratulations, today is yours. Thank you for having me speak, and thank you. So several years ago, um, it became a tradition at CICS for the staff to make up a little funny song about the grads. So I, every year I try and convince Miss Lee to get up here and sing with me. But <laughs> no takers so far. I see the grads of 23. I see you're headed on your way. You're all excited and ready. But before you go, we've got some things to say. You had some times all right, like riding all your bikes to Mill Cove, being jumping in the brine. Keaton was boss of shop. You told them to do things the right way. Except when the drill slipped in your hand. Miss Lee, I'm not doing it today. You had some times for sure, like we day fundraisers. Little kitty face for Murph. Rihanna, the teams will really miss you. You're a leader through all the highs and lows. At least you're leaving us some selfies and pics of your twin day with Denbo. You've had some times, it's true, with Donk and Gus here too, and Brand. All the amazing things you'll be. All right. Um, at this time, I'd like to invite Ramsey Foster to give the valedictory address. Good afternoon, teachers, parents, friends, and most importantly, the class of 2023. 13 years is how long our school career has lasted. All that time, but it only felt like one minute. One minute until we can leave school, one minute until practice is done, just one minute. We are always rushing and waiting until the time is up. One year left before graduation turns into one semester, which turned into one month and eventually one week. Next thing we know, it's one minute till the last time we walk out of high school. 
one minute until we never have to walk through the high school doors again, but the thing we never realized is how much we would want just one more minute back. So the class of 2023, at the end of the day, we may not have always got along, but we were always there for each other through losses, heartbreak, traumas, a pandemic, and everything else that went behind it. I will forever be thankful for the memories and laughs in and outside of school. Without a doubt, it will be difficult saying goodbye and even see you later to the people who have shaped us into who we are today. But I will always cheer you on from the sidelines, no matter how far apart we may be as you continue to write your stories. Never be afraid to make mistakes. Never let the world tell you who it is that you need to be. And never take the easy out, no matter how easy the out is. To the staff and coaches, I know we are small, but we weren't always easy to deal with. From locking Miss Lee out of her classroom and hiding every day, to inside jokes that sadly can't be said. Through all the good and the bad times, thank you for always pushing me, even in times where I didn't want to or felt like I couldn't succeed. Thank you for always being there when you guys, even when you guys had to hear stuff you didn't want to hear. You guys all got us where we are today, and I am forever grateful for that. I would like to take this moment to thank my best friend, my mother, my ultimate inspiration for everything. My mother is the reason I'm standing behind this podium. My mother was the type of woman who thrifted through the clearance section so that my sisters and I could dress like baby gap models. She sacrificed everything, absolutely everything, from her career to her family to give me the opportunity to stand before you and deliver this speech. She always provided me and my sisters with countless chances to explore my interests and acquire new role models as I grew up these past 18 years. I don't think she ever realized the person I most wanted to be was her. To the younger students in the class of 2024, it really does go by fast. Live in the moment, take the one minute and hug your mom and dad. Hang out with your friends, go on the field trip, because one day that minute in high school won't be there. Strive to be the best you and always believe in yourself. I would like to end with a quote by Stephen Colbert. You are the you are about to start the greatest improvisation of all, with no script, no idea what's going to happen, and often with people in places you have never seen before, and you are not in control. So say yes, and if you're lucky, you'll find people who say yes back. Thank you. Well said, Ramsey. Thank you very much. Um, at this time, I'd like to invite the grads to walk down to the back. They uh, have put together a slideshow of some memories over the years, and they would like to watch it as well. So go ahead.
um, the night that uh, they decided to put no parking on all of the teachers' parking lot, they also hung a bunch of um, balloons and, and stuff around the door, but they took selfies of themselves doing it and hung them on the door so we would know who did it. <laughs> and some of those selfies were up there, I saw. So. <laughs> um, all right, the class of 2023 has a special presentation to make for their parents. Okay, at this time, Marissa Calder and Jackson Barker have some going away gifts for the grads. I'd like to invite them to come up. I was off to Kalismain 
do your hair up fancy, not plain, to help you with this. Now don't be shy, here's a bottle of your favorite hair dye. Yes! <laughs> Ramsey. Moncton is calling for Ramsey this year. She'll need books, supplies, and lots of gear. We hope you love it and try not to quit. To help you out, here's your first first aid. Rihanna loves to travel and do all the sports she can. She can often be seen up and down the courts. Games are her thing, never wanting to lose. To so make sure of this, here's some new shoes. <laughs> Keaton is off to trade school in the fall. We hope it goes well and he doesn't stall. On the water is where he can be always be found. Is a shiny new jet ski to sail around. Um. Brianna Smart and Mackenzie Russell have a song that the grads have asked them to perform, so I'd invite them to come forward. I hope the days come easy and the moments pass slow and each road leads you where you want to go if you're faced with a choice and you have to choose hope you choose the one that means the most to you and if one door opens to another door closed hope you keep on walking until you find the window and if it's cold outside show the world the warmth of your smile but more than anything more than anything my wish for you is that this life becomes all that you want it to your dreams stay big your worries stay small you never need to carry more than you can hold while you're out there getting where you're getting to i hope you know somebody loves you and wants the same things too yeah, this is my wish. I hope you never look back, but you never forget all the ones who love you in the place you left. Hope you always forgive and you never regret and you help somebody every chance you get. Oh, you find God's grace in every mistake and always give more than you take. But more than anything, yeah, more than anything, my wish for you is that this life becomes all that you want it to. Your dreams stay big, your worries stay small. You never need to carry more than you can hold while you're out there getting where you're getting to. I hope you know somebody loves you and wants the same things too. Yeah, this is my wish. My wish for you is that this life becomes all that you want it to. Your dreams stay big, your worries stay small. You never need to carry more than you can hold while you're out there getting where you're getting to. I hope you know somebody loves you and wants the same things too. Yeah, this is my wish. Brianna's a former uh, graduate of CICS. It's always a proud moment when we have former grads come back and help us with graduation. Thank you very much, Brianna McKenzie. Um, I would like to ask Heather Newman to come forward at this time for the presentation of awards. Okay, perfect. 
Good afternoon. Ramsey Foster is this year's recipient of the Campobello Lodge Nurses Union Scholarship in the amount of $100. QP Local 2418 Campobello Nursing Homeworkers Union Scholarship, the Robert Hilton Lank Scholarship in the amount of $500, the Campobello Library Association Annual Scholarship in the amount of $500, the Alan Seeley Memorial Scholarship, which is donated by Margaret and Dennis Hare in the amount of $500, the Masonic Lodge of Lubeck Bursary in the amount of $500, the Dana Mitchell Memorial Scholarship on behalf of the Campobello Island Volunteer Fire Department in the amount of $500, and the Nancy and Roger Klein Memorial Scholarship, which is donated by Elizabeth Klein Densmore in the amount of $300. Ramsey is also receiving a certificate for the completion of the post-intensive French program, grade 12. Belle Mitchell is receiving a certificate of completion of the post-intensive French program, a certificate of oral profi proficiency in French, and Belle is also the recipient of the Governor General's Award, which goes to the graduate with the highest overall average. The Governor General's Medal, established in 1873, recognizes students who have achieved the highest academic average. On behalf of Her Ex Excellency, the Right Honorable Mary Simon, Governor General of Canada, I am pleased to present the academic award to Belle Mitchell. Rihanna Newman is this year's recipient of the Campobello Veterans Scholarship in the amount of $1,000 and the Amarsha Stanley Scholarship in the amount of $250. Rihanna is also receiving certificates of completion of the post-intensive French program and a certificate of oral proficiency in French. This is very frustrating for me to be of this age where I need these things all the time to read. <laughs> Put them on, take them off. Okay, at this time, this is the moment we've all been waiting for, the presentation of diplomas. So I'd like to ask Madame Chu to help me with this. Okay, our first graduate, Ramsey, is the organizer of the class. She kept us on track planning graduation and in many other aspects of her time at CICS. She was an active member of all varsity sports as well as an avid volunteer. She helped run the clock at many events as well as volunteering to help out in the cafeteria when she was needed. We will certainly miss all of the helpful things she did every single day. Ramsey is off to Olton in the fall, and we know she will be a great success because of her hard work ethic and determination. Ramsey Storm Foster. Keaton, he just joined our class two years ago, but he has made a big impression in his short time here at CICS. Keaton has successfully completed the Essential Skills Program, which means that he is someone who knows how to take initiative, be creative, and be a problem solver. He received the Inspire Award this year because of the capstone project he has left as his legacy here at the school. Keaton has been accepted into the welding program at NBCC, and we know that he will be a credit to their school, just like he was to ours. Keaton Sean Lord. Belle. Belle was the straight-talking, hard-working comedian in the class, and she also had the best dance moves. Belle kept us well entertained with her dry sense of humor and her practical approach to every situation. She played on all the varsity teams, bringing fun and motivation to all the players. 
Bell has been accepted to the Human Services Program at Washington County Community College in Calais, and we know that she will shine there. Bell Jill Mitchell. Rihanna, she's the fun-loving storyteller of the class. She's a continual positive force, and we will certainly miss hearing her laugh in the halls. Rihanna also played all the varsity sports, and I know her leadership and positivity will be missed next year. Rihanna has been accepted into the Early Childhood Program at Washington County Community College, and we know that she will be awesome. Rihanna Jo Lane Newman. Great, okay, um, that's correct. Um, Kennard Malik has asked if he could make one more presentation, so yes, come on up. <laughs> okay, first I'd like to say th uh, congratulations to the class of 2023, and thank you for this honor to present these gifts to you. Oh yeah. <laughs> we have uh, four Bibles here from the Beacon of Hope Baptist Church. Uh, I'd like to present each one of you with one of them. And first, Ramsey Foster, my great niece who used to crawl around on my head at Christmas time. <laughs> I apologize for that. It was a last minute addition and I didn't write it down, so I forgot. Um, ladies and gentlemen, can you join me in welcoming the class of 2023?